I sat down with a couple of rappers who were in Jackson at that time called Reese and Bigelow. They'd had a hit called Never Scared that they that they'd recorded with Bone Crusher. And they they were two nice guys and they were very approachable. And they gave they, you know, I, I clicked with them and they agreed to help me write my rap. And I thought it would be better if I arrived with a few lyrics. I thought I better have something that I'm bringing to them. And in the shower, the, the a, a little jingle came into my mind. And the jingle, such as it was, was jiggle, jiggle. I like to see you wiggle. It makes me want to dribble. Fancy a fiddle. And I was like, well. That's pretty inane, but it's a, it gives us something, the seed of something. The story behind the song Jiggle Jiggle takes me back to 2000. I was uh, on a TV show called Weird Weekends, Louis Theroux's Weird Weekends, to give it its full name. And it would follow me as I investigated worlds that were uh, different to my, to my normal one. And one of the episodes was about gangster rap in the dirty south. Now I've been a rap fan going back to my teenage years, so it was a it was kind of um a little bit of a childhood dream come true for me to be doing a story about rap. Anyway, the premise of the program was that I would go and try uh to immerse myself in the world almost like a, a as a participant as well as a journalist. So as a way of understanding the rap scene I thought it would be interesting to write and perform my own rap. So then earlier this year, uh, I had some shows going out and I went on a YouTube show called Chicken Shop Date with Amelia de Moldenberg. And she said, do you still remember the rap you did? And I was like, of course. And I did the, uh, the, the first verse of the rap and they put that in the episode. There were a couple of producers in Manchester called Duke and Jones. For fun, they did a little remix on TikTok and then a couple of young women in South London decided to do a dance based on the TikTok. The dance is amazing. It just seemed to catch on. My money don't jiggle jiggle, it folds. I like to see you wiggle wiggle, for sure. It makes me want to dribble dribble, you know. So uh, my money don't jiggle jiggle, it folds is clearly referring to the jiggling of coins in your pocket. There's sort of two meanings of making it sound like it's Shakespeare, but it, there's sort of two meanings uh, mixed together because jingle jingle, which is obviously pocket jingle, is a term for loose change. But it folds is folding money, paper money, which is obviously higher denominations. It means I'm basically saying I've got a lot of money. Write it in my fear. You really have to see it. Six feet two in a compact, no slack, but luckily the seats go back. It's obviously a thing in rap to talk about the car you drive. I thought it would be amusing to be real and not pretend to have a car that I didn't have. And, and you know, just to sort of be honest about having a Fiat, which is not a car you would typically maybe boast about. I do remember Bigelow said, riding in my Fiat, looking for a Biatch. And I said, like, I don't think I can say Biatch. I can groove with it in other people's lyrics, but I sort of wanted to be true to my own code about um, you know, I don't, I'm not in the habit of calling women biatches. And also, why don't really say fiat? Like, because I was raised in England, I say fiat, which is a different pronunciation, which rhymes with see it. And I thought, well, what about riding in my fiat? You really have to see it. Like, that's that maybe that's a that's a more um, that feels more natural to me. So we went with that. Having come up with the fiat line, Reese said, aren't you kind of Aren't you kind of scrunched up in that fear? Like, isn't it kind of small? And I said, um, not really, because the seats go back. And then I, one of us said, hey, maybe that's a lyric too. I've got a knack to relax in my mind, sipping some red, red wine. Then we had the idea of mentioning hobbies or things that I'm into. I was not a connoisseur exactly, but in order to relax or as part of my relaxation program, I'd sometimes have a sip of red wine so it's like oh we'll mention the red wine and then reese was like um oh why don't you say red red wine you know referencing the global ub40 hit shepherd's bush my compact push notting hill gate my fiat skates with a crater cabernet but not today because i gotta drive i want to stay alive not because it's illicit do i have to get explicit 
So then I thought, well, maybe we should mention wine again with a crate of Cabernet, Cabernet Sauvignon being a nice wine, nice red wine. And then I remember having a panic because I thought, does it sound like I'm driving around West London getting snockered, you know, drinking and driving? Like, you know, driving under the influence is not a good look for a rapper or anyone else. So I was like, how do we make it clear that um, I mean, you know, I like to drive and I like to drink red wine, but I don't do them at the same time. I also didn't want to be super square and be like, because I'm obeying the law. So that's why I said, not because it's illicit. Do I have to get explicit? So really, I'm just saying like, yeah, I'm not like, I don't want to kill people or be, or be drinking and driving. But I also, it's not because it's illegal. It's just that I'm a responsible guy with his own moral code. As a matter of fact, I sip on the yak with Big and Reese, 200 diamonds in their piece. I'm trying to get mine so I can shine. I thought it was only fair to give Reese and Big a shout out. And in fact, um, you know, they were keen to give themselves a shout out, which is fair enough. And so um, at this point, we were like, well, let's bring them into it. And and I said, as a matter of fact, I sip on the yak, yak being short for cognac. And I hadn't actually drunk cognac with them as far as I can recall. But, you know, in theory, it was something I would have enjoyed doing. I thought about learning the dance, of course. Um, and uh, I guess two things happened. Like one was I saw the, the dance. I was, I was like, that's that dance is quite hard to do. Like, it's not like, oh, you can learn that in 15 minutes. It would have been an hour or so. Nevertheless, I was tempted. My wife, who's, believe it or not, a bit cooler than I am. I know you're thinking, is that possible? She was like, I think she's like, the more you try and spam out this craze, the more you're likely to kill it. I thought that's probably a good approach. So 99% of interviews I turned down, and there were two exceptions, uh, the New York Times. And the second one was this, because I've often used genius over the years. And it kind of, I felt like it gave me some kinship to the rappers who I grew up admiring and who I've, I've admired ever since. You know, every now and then when I'm confused by a lyric, I would come to genius and be like, what is he saying? You know what I mean? And so here I am. <laughs> 